story. I um, I was I graduated from college. I finished up an internship that I was working. I saw um, I saw an ad in the paper for Sears. You've heard of Sears department stores, probably uh, Sears carpet cleaning. They would hire you. They would give you the equipment and the training, and they would let you take the equipment on the evenings and weekends and get your own jobs on your own. So that sounded like my own business. And so I applied to them, got the job, whatever. Um, I, I was, I was, it was funny because I was earning two hundred dollars a week doing that, and I was spending three hundred dollars a week to get there. So it really wasn't a for a finance major. You think I'd be doing better in the math department? But Indeed, yeah. <laughs> I, I took a I took a vacation from that job because a cousin was graduating from college in Georgia. So I went down to her graduation. I took a vacation from the job that was losing me money, and I saw an ad in the paper. And it was from a carpet cleaning company down there. They were charging $2.95 per room for carpet cleaning. And we were charging $13 a room in Albany. So I called them up. I said, you know, hey, I'm from New York. How do you do that? And they charged extra for the deodorant and the Scotch Guard and all that other extra stuff. So they were hoping to bump the ticket up with upsells and things. So I came back to uh, the Albany, New York area, and I put an ad in the Saratogian, a little, small little newspaper. Uh, Lee's carpet cleaning, $7.95 a room, three room minimum. And I put that ad in the paper one day and I called my answering service. We had answering services back then in 1991. And I had 15 calls by 1030 in the morning. My answering service said every little old lady was calling me from Saratoga. So I, that was the last day I was working for Sears carpet cleaning. I gave them back their equipment. I bought my own equipment and I was on my own off to the races, probably in June of 1991. And you made this work, even though it was a lot cheaper than than uh, before. Yes, because I was getting, I was keeping all the money myself. You know, of that thirteen dollars a room, I was, I don't even remember what I was getting, but it wasn't very much. Mm, okay, now it makes yeah. sense. Yes, that's really cool. And um, yeah. you always always had the kind of drive to create then more and have not new ideas to uh, to and foster this and push your business all the time uh, forward, didn't you? I was back in college. Do you, are you familiar with the name Jay Abraham? Yeah. Marketing consultant. He was doing $15,000 seminars back then on marketing. How do you become a junior Jay Abraham, a junior marketing consultant? So that was when I was a senior in, in high school. I paid Jay Abraham $2,000 that I didn't have for literally 25 pounds of marketing stuff that I still have and still consult. So I've been a, I was a marketing uh, geek when I first saw Jay Abraham advertising a 60, in a 16-page insert in Entrepreneur Magazine, just reading page after page of all his exploits doing marketing. So that's how I really got the interest in, in, in marketing and how you could send 100 postcards and something good would happen. So that's how I got into marketing. Interesting. Yeah. And um, now if you would look a bit into the future a bit forward, how would you think um, you can up this rejection challenge even more, make it even more scary for you? Or how could you um, have a more fear of, of getting rejections? Is it then the in-person, just going on the yeah. streets maybe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If I, if I really wanted to scare myself, it would be a thousand in-person rejections. That would mean I'd have to get 12 a day out there on the streets. And <laughs> that would be really scary and probably not a best use of my time because, you know, he, talking, I'm talking to one out of five decision makers when I'm calling a, a, a physical business. And if I'm, if I'm doing that in person, that's a lot of wasted time and energy going from business to business. So um, I, I think, you know, if you read the book, Go For No, she talks about different levels of failure. And the, the largest one is exponential failure. I think in a case like mine, it's hiring one or two people to get the nose for me. So their job is to get on the phone and talk to people and get rejected more information. Yeah. And, uh, okay. That is like one part to get to up your business, but maybe for you in person, maybe mm -hmm. the, the growth would be, um, exponential as well. If you would go for the fears even more. Yes, sure. And that is one of my goals to, you know, I've got what, 546 more to get. And I do want to get more in-person no's, you know, the example being stopping there at the at the construction site yesterday. So I, I want to do more of that. And I'm now attuned for that. Um, there's a pizza shop owner or manager uh, 
that parks his car on my street quite a bit down. So I'm just waiting for him. And I, I walk, I try to get my 10,000 steps a day. So I see him at his car. Um, I've seen him at his car, not while I've been walking by, I've been driving by. So one of the times I'm hoping to catch him at his car and ask him about um, text message marketing. Uh, so I'm waiting for that opportunity to do that. But now I'm attuned to people I can talk to and and uh, asking questions that I wouldn't have normally asked when I wasn't on this project. Yeah. Do you also think that you might um, create new ways of thinking while you are looking for those no's and like, while you're looking for those rejections so that you actually go for completely different routes than you have uh, been doing before? Absolutely. And I use this example. I um, Some of the calls I've made to the pizza shops, they say, well, you have to call Joe he and he's at a different number. I say, well, okay, give me the number. Now, previously, if I had gotten another number, I wouldn't have bothered to call. You know, I I mustered up so much courage to make a call in the first place. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the, you know, I knew I was pretty pretty certain I was going to get a rejection if I made this second call because they gave me the direct number of the decision maker. Now, if somebody says, oh, you got to call Joe, he's at this number, I will write down that number and I will call that number because I know there's probably a no on the end there. Sometimes you get surprised and there's a yes, but so there's been that change in, in aspect of, of wanting to get that number of the decision maker and call them directly. But also maybe in, in completely thinking um, that you can approach different people, not only that you got, okay, I get further towards the no, but rather, mm -hmm. okay, how can I get the, for example, 12 no's you have to get per day, right? How can I get more of them um, or how can I get them in different areas to actually broaden my horizon? Yeah, uh, that happened today, I think. I um, I got a, a thank you email. Somebody heard me on a, another podcast and he sent me a thank you email. Thank you for doing it. He was going to start this in his own business and he owns an insurance agency. And, uh, you know, his, his uh, signature on his email said owner. So I emailed him back thanking him for his thank you and making a pitch. I said, uh, you can be you can be no number 455 if you let me talk to you about uh, social media marketing management. And he wrote back and he said, I'm, I'm going to give you a no at this point in time, but thanks for uh, thinking of me and blah, blah, blah. So I got 454 just before our call today. That's pretty awesome to like yeah, really gonna, uh, yeah. getting a thank you. Oh, wait, I can get another no. Exactly. I'm, I'll figure out a way to get a no out of you yet. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you had given me a little more introduction in at the beginning, I would have said instead of thanks for having me, I would have said disappointed to be here, Julian, but because uh, you gave me a yes, but I didn't. So anyway, I'm sorry for that, man. Yes, <laughs> I'll let it go this time. Um, and what do you expect out of this challenge? Uh, what is going? What is this going to bring you? Maybe in new or also in in far future? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, good question. I didn't, you know, all, all I knew is at the beginning, I knew that I would be a different person uh, at the end than I was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I've gotten into this, now that I've seen the reaction that people have had um, and seen my own results and we're early on in, in this, uh, you know, maybe I write a book on this, you know, Adventures in Rejection is the name of my Facebook group. Maybe Adventures in Rejection, inspiring stories of people who faced rejection and won, you know, something like that. Because there are stories out there of people who have done things like this. And uh, I've yet to find a story of someone who took on a legitimate rejection challenge and didn't have something great happen. So I think it's just get, making people aware of things like that. And that's what I enjoy doing. You know, doing that research, talking to those people, maybe uh, documenting their stories and putting in a, in a book. So that, that's something that's probably in my future. Is that maybe because people are... Uh, who to take on this challenge go for the rejection so basically most of the time it is their fear right so when they yeah. go through their fear that is why uh, that's the reason why they um after afterwards get a better or a better off or have the positive impact of it what do you think yeah yes yes the um the thing we have to remember and it's you know easier for me now that i've gotten 454 no's is after you get the no after you're gone after they hang up a minute later, they're not thinking about you. They're not talking about you at the company picnic um, in, in two weeks. So it's you know a, a lot of what 
the fear we have is what people will think of us. And mm -hmm. the fact is people aren't thinking of us. They're thinking of their own problems. They're thinking of the bill that's due, all that sort of stuff. So we have to just get out of our own heads and ask for what we want. And you might be surprised sometimes you can get what you want. And do you think the the only way to get there, to get behind the fear of what the other person think is going through it or going at it? No, you have to. And there's a guy named Jia Zhang. He, um, his goal back in 2012, 13, 14, I'm not sure exactly. He wanted to get one, rejected 100 times in 100 days. And he filmed everything using his phone. And he would do things like, I guess on his first day, he just went out and asked a stranger to borrow hundred dollars. He didn't have, he didn't, any of the guy said, no, he uh, went, got a burger at a burger place, went up and a, after he'd finished it and asked for a burger refill, uh, they said, no, <laughs> he went into a donut shop and this was around Olympic times, I guess. And he asked them to, he wanted a, five donuts shaped like the Olympic rings. And they said, yes. And one of his things was he went up to some, a stranger's door, knocked on the door and said, can I play football or soccer in your backyard? And they said, yes. So he has, he turned this into a, a nice little speaking business for himself. There's a Ted talk. If you search rejection therapy, you'll find all about Jia Zhang. Uh, so yes, get out there and do those stunt no's. That really takes some of the edge off. Uh, one of those I did here, we have a toll road in New York and I was on it uh, a couple of weeks ago. And the, the toll for me was 30 cents. So I handed my ticket in and the uh, toll tech taker said, uh, 30 cents, please. And I held up a lottery ticket, a dollar lottery ticket. And I said, can I pay with this lottery ticket? And he said, he smiled and said, uh, no, sir. So I gave him, I paid my 30 cents and let him keep the lottery ticket for playing along. So just uh, doing things like that to lessen the blow of, of no ask for a good guy or a good gal discount the next time you're shopping and just see what happens. Most of the time, the person you're talking to isn't authorized to give you a yes, but it still lessens the burden and make it fun. Don't uh, make them feel, um, you know, embarrassed or anything like that, but, you know, make it fun for them and fun for you too. Oh, I think that's a really good tip. So actually that you can use super easy implement. So maybe yeah. what would be, one of um, your tips other people can use your challenge or or tips from your learnings on uh, how they could actually implement it as well. Like what do they need to actually start? What do you well, I think one of the most important things you can do if you decide you wanted to take on this challenge is be public about it. You know, mm -hmm. tell people, start a Facebook group, you know, your summer of a hundred no's or your summer of a thousand no's, whatever you want to call it, but be public about it. Uh, most of the money I've made, uh, all of the money I've made so far in this project has been from uh, interactions I've had with people who found out about it. They, um, my, I, I read at the beginning, I can achieve every goal and reach every dream by simply hearing no more often. That's on my, both, it's in my bedroom, it's in my, both my bathrooms, kitchen, it's at the bottom of the stairs, it's all over the house because I want to be surrounded by that. And I have a cleaning lady that comes in once a month and normally I take stuff like that down because I don't want to let her, her to give me a lot of commentary on what I'm doing. So, but I left them up this last time and she said, she said, what's this all about? And so I explained, Oh, she said, you should call my, my uh, stepson. He is involved. He has a, his own real estate company and they're always doing marketing. So sure enough, I contact him. We had a nice meeting. It hasn't worked out to anything yet. I haven't gotten a no yet, but I haven't gotten a yes. But just by having being open about my goal, that got me a, a, an appointment with a guy who owns a real estate company. So uh, be be public about your goal. You know, get a this is a a little chalkboard name tag that I got. I think the name of the company was Name Tag Wizard, where you can buy these little chalkboard name tags, and and just be open about what you're doing. People are going to take an interest in you. They're going to laugh probably, but that's in my case that's my goal. You know, make them laugh with me rather than at me. But at me is okay too. But be public about your goal and just do do um. Try and do something every day that asks for that good guy, good gal discount. Most players are going to tell you no, but hey, you never know. That's that's super, uh, super handy. And thank you for the tip. I think that's really um, important to let others know. So they might also actually support you and others can contact you to, as you maybe did in the Facebook group, like give have a support group and have, have a really nice um, surrounding that keeps you 
pushing forward. Right. And it's it, in the case of a rejection goal, it's fun. If you had a goal to be a millionaire by the age of 25 and you're telling everybody, I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 25, nobody's going to support that. They're all going to think you're crazy. They're all going to, uh, you know, uh, silently hope you don't make it because they don't want you to get too far ahead of them. But you go out there and say, hey, I want to be rejected 100 times this month. You know, people are going to take an interest in that and it's going to get you talking about it. And you never know what good can come when you're talking about your business. Thank you. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, and maybe getting uh, to the end of this podcast episode, what are the three major lessons you would like to share uh, with the audience and with other people that you think are valuable for them and can help them? Okay. Three. Uh, as I said, I, I've said before, I've never found a, a story of somebody who took on one of these challenges and had a negative result. They're probably out there now that I'm making this pronouncement. I'm probably going to hear from them. Yeah, I, I got a hundred no's and nothing good happened. But by and large, you know, if you're out there pursuing no's, you're probably going to uh, get a good result out of it. Uh, don't speak for someone else, meaning uh, don't give yourself a no from someone else. Get the no from them. And I'll give you a, a perfect example. I was uh, scheduled to talk on a podcast uh, earlier this week. And or maybe I guess it was last week. So I was listening to the most recent podcast this gentleman had done. And it was with a lady. And one of the things they were talking about is the sorry state of cold email these days. So they they are talking about all the cold emails they get. They hate cold emails. They're bad, blah, 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 blah. So um, I was talking on that podcast as a result of a cold email. And if I had heard that podcast before, I sent the cold email. I probably would have said, eh, he's not going to talk to me. He doesn't like cold email, but I did. Luckily I didn't. And I, I sent it and I was talking to him on this podcast. Now he never didn't bring that up. I'm glad he didn't because I didn't want to have to embarrass the poor guy. But you know, that was, I didn't accept a no. I didn't give myself a no from this guy. So don't accept a no from somebody else. Um, make sure you get it from them. And then one of the th quotes I read in an article, um, I think is encouraging to people. What if the only thing standing between you and where you want to be next year is 100 denials or 100 rejections or 100 no's? So get out there. You know, success isn't a left turn and failure a right turn. To get to success, you have to go through a lot of failure, a lot of rejection. So don't waste a lot of time. Start plowing through and get through that rejection as fast as you can. Oh, well, that is super almost counterintuitive way, but I feel there's some, there's truth to it. Absolutely. Um, and then two last questions. One is what um, you already mentioned before, there's uh, you kind of connect with the name of the podcast. So what, yes. what is it that, that you see uh, in there? Oh, the sloth, the, the lazy... Yeah, uh, you know, my my favorite thing, if I see a friend or something on the street, I'll yell, get a job, you know, and they always say you first, because, you know, for 25 years, nobody has seen me do a real job. So they probably think I'm a sloth, too. So that's what I liked about your podcast name. <laughs> and um, then the last question is, uh, I presume I know the answer, but I still ask, what is maybe the most influential um, quote or sentence or um, lesson you you learned? Uh, again, it is the quote that, that, that inspired this whole thing. I can achieve every goal and reach every dream by simply hearing no more often. And I've been reluctant to hear no my entire life. And I decided to rip the Band-Aid off this summer and hear it a lot more. And what is the result so far out of it? 454 no's and $1,800 in extra uh, unplanned income. And how do you feel about it? Happy. You know, I, I would love to, I would love to quintuple my income being the name Leo Quinn. I would love to quintuple my income just because again, it makes for an interesting story. And it, even if I, it takes me till December to quintuple my income, it's still a pretty good story. Thanks a lot, Leo. That was, that was really fun. Interesting podcast. Well, thank you, Julian. I appreciate it.